I'm Corbett Wall with DB Auction. Here with the cattle market summary for the week ending May the 25th, where we wonder if that cattle on feed report is uh, was neutral enough. We think probably it was because it came out earlier than normal because it was a holiday weekend, so come out at 11, and and the board uh, stayed pretty true and, and uh, saw some good gains there. Uh, and closed higher for the day so we think that it was probably good enough even though in all three categories it might have been just a tick on the bearish side but uh, but it was it didn't fall out of bed in, in any of those spots and it looks to be like it's going to wash over pretty good so we can move right on but uh, you look at that cattle on feed report uh, the inventories for May the 1st come out at 105.1 which was very close to the guess the average of the analyst guess at 104.8 placements ended up at 91.7 and it was the farthest from but it's the one that has the most uh, variation in it uh, normally than what we expect it to be but your average guess was at 90.6 so it wasn't horrible marketing's come out at 105.8 very close to the 106.0 uh, that uh, the analysts had predicted so it looks like we can move right on from the cattle and feed report and uh, and not have to worry about that and the gains that we experienced uh, leading up to that because everybody thought it would be fairly friendly we get to keep and look at the board for last week on all the gains that we saw a great uh, uh, week of futures markets especially considering how sour this fat cattle market is but everybody knows it's sour and they're pretty much just swallowing the hickey that they're taking on this on this fat cattle market and the market position that we had established and losing very rapidly but june live cattle futures monday was up 252 tuesday was down two cents wednesday up 55 thursday back off a dollar five and friday up 25 cents to end the week with june live cattle futures at 104.65 up two dollars and 25 cents for the week your August is back squarely above a dollar at 102.30 to end the week, and that was up four dollars and eight cents for the week. Your August feeder cattle, big gains there. Monday up 287, Tuesday up 22, Wednesday up 262, uh, Thursday down just a nickel, and Friday up a dollar 62 with your August feeder cattle ending the week at 144.92 up seven dollars and thirty cents for the week now your next uh, several traded months september october november are all within pennies of august so there's a lot of stability there on your feeder cattle market but it's a little bit hard to figure uh that that uh, we're staying up there we've talked about it and we talk about it all the time your feeder cattle market is a very competitive market you've got a lot of players in it a lot of guys wanting to buy cattle you got farmer feeders wanting to feed cattle you've got uh, big corporate feed yards that need to keep those pens full you've got uh, smaller independent feeders dabbling in it you've got guys uh, buying uh, feeder weight cattle to turn out uh, because of the condition that they have there's just a lot of competition and uh, in that feeder cattle market as opposed uh, and, and contrastly to your your fat cattle market where you have very little competition and, and not much uh, enthusiasm at all but uh, how, how we're holding this feeder cattle market up there you look at those markets and let's say we got an 800 pound steer at a buck 45 that's eleven $1 hundred and sixty dollars per head uh, we're going to take that steer to fourteen hundred pounds at least uh, we're going to go off of your uh, October board there around a dollar six and we're going to uh, be on the, the the friendly side of that that's fourteen hundred and eighty four dollars a head uh, for your fat steer there supposing it brings that market well uh, you know an old timer told me a long time ago no matter what you think if you're going to figure expenses in two you pretty much got to double uh, whatever your corn price is to double that front figure into your cost of gain so if you do that all your corns over four dollars a bushel now going into your new crop so let's say 80 cents on the gain commercially uh, you know if you're a farmer feeder and you did everything yourself and you didn't figure your opportunity costs maybe you can figure at 60 cents on the gain well at 60 cents on the gain uh, you can lock in about a $35 a head loss at 80 cents on the gain you can lock in a loss of uh, over $150 a head 
and neither one of those sound like much fun but it's just got to where all your cattle feeders now are banking on a big basis uh, we've been running 15 to 20 dollar basis here this spring uh, I, you can't count on the big basis uh, late in the summer and early in the fall a lot of times it, it runs very very close or maybe even negative and uh, so you know these guys are really really betting on to come uh, getting excited about buying these cattle but uh, you look at your fat cattle trade and, and we really didn't have a big push on negotiated trade uh, recording this here on Saturday everybody's getting ready for the big Memorial weekend uh, uh, I'll be headed down to Rio Dosa Downs to the opening weekend in the cool pines in New Mexico hopefully you guys are doing something fun uh, but didn't really have a big trade this week they did start coming through mandatory price reporting with a few sales trickling in in pretty much all five major feeding regions except for Texas which they only sell about six or less than 10 percent of their cattle uh, negotiated anyway so it doesn't make a big difference there but uh, a few live sales from 109 to 111 that 111 was mostly in Iowa uh, your, your 110 was in the southern plains in Kansas uh, they were selling some cattle that way Friday morning but not the big push not a big stampede of cattle anywhere selling at one market there some 109 in Nebraska not sure if uh, how many of those are for immediate delivery how many of them are for two to four week delivery but the the Packers pretty much got everything like they want it now they've got tons of cattle uh, contracted uh, that are delivering here right through this big wall and we've hit the wall there's a lot of market ready cattle now they're all here plus the wall that we built selling uh, for the last six weeks for, for short term delivery they've got everything going their way uh, that 109 to 111 uh, on a live basis would be three to five bucks lower. Uh, we've seen a few uh, dress sales from 176 to 177 in the Northern Plains. That'd be like five to six bucks lower. Uh, if you went to a regional, you could uh, get a grid pricing of 180 on choice. Uh, and so, you know, the market's sure lower, but everybody's still uh, very excited about this feeder cattle market and everything. And and uh, and we are getting the price up there, especially on the futures. Uh, and the, over the next couple of months, there will be a lot of guys contracting grass cattle uh, for mid to late summer uh, and even early fall there. But and they're, they're, you know, it's a good thing this price is getting up there where they might get a few of those bought. They do not want these backgrounders uh, that are running those cattle out on that least grass for the most part uh, feeding those cattle because they'll see exactly what they'll do. Those are the best feeding cattle of the year is those cattle, those hard yearling green cattle coming off of uh, grass pastures there, uh, the double stock pastures in the Flint Hills and the Osage and then and then you, you get later in the summer and into the early fall out in the foothills of the Rockies and your other major grazing areas. but. Uh, just big disparage between what's going on in your fat cattle arena and what's going on in the feeder cattle arena. But let's look at your, your feeder cattle markets for last week. Your real time index on uh, Beef Market Central uh, ended the week at 134.32. That was up $8.90 compared to the end of the previous week. And uh, we see that there's just not a lot of cattle been moving and, and that's mainly because of the big push. Another thing is a lot of your sales are going to be winding down for your summer months. There won't be many cattle in on-site uh, sale barns. There'll be some big videos coming uh, here over the next uh, month or two. But uh, just uh, guys did give a big push for the last of the big sales uh, in your on-site cattle auctions. Uh, not a lot of cattle moving. We noticed in that cattle on feed report that your placements uh, sure showed uh, the situation where there, there was no wheat pasture as your, your Texas uh, placements uh, during April were down 16% uh, over a year ago. Your Kansas was down 10% and Nebraska was up 6%. So that's what made out to be that, that 92 on your placement figure. 
but uh, look at your cash feeder markets for the week in your sale barns you know they, they started out early in the week kind of soft everybody was really not sure what was going on with the sour fat cow market and everything and it was just a little kind of steady to week in your big Monday sales but by the time we got into those big featured auctions middle of the week and late in the week sharply higher uh, your, your market your cash feeder cattle market five to eight bucks higher uh, fully and uh, your calves sold better uh, locally near your grazing areas, but the calves were sure no runaway out in the southeast uh, because your shippers are kind of slowing down. And uh, with a holiday week next week, uh, not too much going on. We did have a good slaughter for this past week, but next week we're going into a, a, a short week because of the holiday. So uh, that's kind of the way uh, your shippers didn't get excited about buying a lot of cattle to ship. Uh, over the holiday weekend and, and for for this next coming week either but uh, uh, they are having a big Memorial Day sale you don't see very many sale barns open on Memorial Day Monday but they are having a special in Russell Iowa and you guys that are wanting to get some cattle bought and get those cattle secured they will have top quality cattle in Russell Iowa uh, with a lot of long strings uh, cons consigned already uh, including one 300 head string of all natural charlets coming off one place there and uh, the the feeder auction on monday memorial day in russell iowa starts at 11 o'clock in the morning if you can't make it to russell you can watch right on dvauction.com and uh, pick up russell iowa there and they will have a good sale and a lot a lot of top quality cattle for you guys that are up in the northern plains and want to feed something that's good Let's look at a couple individual quotes late last week uh, at uh, Shasta Livestock Auction Yard out in California. Or I like to call it uh, Merle Haggard Commission Company. There in Cottonwood, uh, they sold a big long string of big steers there. 183 steers in Cottonwood, California, and that's way out west. 841 pounds bring 134.50. Uh, they, they had another string there, just one load, or uh, about a load and a half, I guess, 821 pounds at 141.50. Now, that's way out there on the West Coast, guys. Get a, a good established market uh, there, closer into the middle part of the country here. Northwest Stockyards in Enid, Oklahoma, uh, Friday, 111 head of steers, weighed 828 at 135 and a quarter. That's a look at your markets for last week. From a home DV auction office here in Canyon, Texas. We'll talk to you next week, and it won't be until Wednesday after we get some markets going. Thank you.